pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll have the agenda received as Move. proposed or amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is public comments. Anybody from the public wishing to comment on something other than an, an agenda item? Seeing none, moving on to claims and payments. Uh, total claims and payments, 499,423.90. Um, some of the bigger ticket items, uh, 45,000 for uh, E911. Uh, we had JCS uh, with 34,000, 75,000 um, for uh, board agencies. That's the second half allocation for the libraries. Um, health department, 35,000. Everything looked normal. So. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Layla? Yes. Little? Yes. Jonka? Yes. White? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Next, we will receive project updates from department heads and elected officials. Morning, Kathy. Morning. 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 Good morning, morning, Board. Kathy Nicholas, County Engineer. Uh, all of our truck plows are out on the paved road system this morning, uh, cleaning up the roads from the snow last evening. There have not been any plows sent out to the gravel road system yet just due to the low you know the low snowfall events i just wanted to mention briefly about the highway 20 the historic signing that we re we have received a proposal i think you've received a proposal back in november from the, the cedar falls tourism uh, commission on the highway 20 signing the historic highway 20 and I wanted to know how you, you would like to proceed with that. I have contacted some of the affected counties, but I have not talked with Cedar Falls or Waterloo, and they, of course, are affected as well. Uh, we could have a work session. I know that um, Kim Manning from the Cedar Falls Tourism Office would like to be here to, to discuss this. Would you like me to coordinate a work session on, on a day that she can attend? Or how would you like to uh, proceed? Do you with have this? a recommendation? Because when I talked to you the last time, you were going to confer with the other. You have, there are other counties that turned it down, correct? So Grundy County has turned it down, as as far as I've heard. Dubuque and Delaware at this time are saying no, but they. It sounds like they are open if they can open to the the idea of having these signs placed, depending on how the costs can be. Why are they turning it down? You know. So I think that in Grundy County, the, the issue is just more signing, perhaps seen as unnecessary signing on their county road system. So what's your recommendation then? I am not opposed to placing the signs. The, the proposal submitted by the tourism um, office seems like, seems like it's too many signs. Our portion of historic 20 you know, is is old is Independence, then it goes down to Osage, and over to Jessup. Um, they have signs at every 90 degree turn, and you know our our section of Historic 20 is surrounded by gravel roads. It seems like it's intuitive that you would stay on the paved road system. So we would probably propose eliminating some of those uh, extra signs that indicate a turn three or four signs along the route saying that this is historic 20 there's a very distinctive sign that shows that this is historic 20 we would not be opposed to that the signing that is recommended is is being made by a company out east it looks like and so the costs are higher than we think we could get prison industries to make a very similar if not the same sign at a what we think would be a cheaper cost. But there's no cost to the county, is there? We have to pretty much pay for everything. We would pay for the, the signs, and then we would install the signs. I know. Pete, you reviewed that. I didn't think it said we had to pay for everything. Yeah, I was thinking, too, it was maybe like they wanted to come and do the presentation, and, and that wasn't part of the request at that time. And maybe I'm not I, and understanding that. It's all been a lately. while, too, so I don't know. I don't know. It yeah, I'm... Like I'm open to a work session on this with whoever from the cities would like to attend. Yeah, with them, with 
Mm -hmm. Yep, Kim or Ta I think it was then, Tavis okay. or something yeah. that was also offering to, but whoever that's got information on it, I guess. And prison industries, I'm sure it's a, a cost-effective way to do it, but another option, uh, the Waterloo Sign Department can do to custom signs right. as well. So. Right. So they do a nice job, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we think there's um, more cost-effective ways to get the same sign, particularly if we have to pay for them. Yep. Would you like, so you, we want to have a work session with those with everyone and with those two, Tavis and well, mainly yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Banning with um, uh, tourism, yeah. But again, my decision is going to be based on a lot what you say as a county engineer sure. at your roads, right? So I'm looking for a recommendation yeah. from you if it's limited signs, no signs, or more, or what. Well, and that sounds like that's something we could discuss at that meeting yeah. or at least clarify with them. So. Sure, they, they can tell you about why they feel this is an economic benefit to have these signs and tourist benefit. Right. I think it was mm -hmm. the, yeah. And the more signs we got up, the more chances we got to knock in some over to. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's what you see out on the interstate. They're down all the time. They put up new ones, and about three days later, it's down. So they might I'd be down. for eliminating the amount of signs we put up. Okay, we'll proceed in that manner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where were we? Good morning. Where were we? Morning, Superintendent. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick update on uh, the uh, new VA Community Center. Um, the center's coming along nicely. We've uh, gotten the new cabinets installed. The new flooring has been installed. Um, we uh, are scheduled to go in and do some of the detail work, such as the stripping and waxing on the uh, on the existing floors that we left there and also on the new floors. Uh, we hope to see that within the next two weeks. Um, I'll be working with uh, Kim and IT uh, to uh, get the uh, uh, necessary equipment installed for the uh, computers and phones that they'll have in that area. So I think we're running right on schedule uh, for that project. Um, I will be bringing to a board, to the board, uh, a couple of items, the, some overages that we had found uh, during the project with regards to uh, some of the sheetrock that had to be removed and replaced. Um, but all in all, uh, I think it's uh, turning out very nice and it's going to serve as a, a great uh, community center for uh, the veterans. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Well, any, thank any you. Any questions thank on that? Thank you, Ray. Um, thank you. All right. Anybody else today? very topic because I know Orlando's going to do the budget. I'm Heidi Warrington, one of the commissioners um, for the Blackhawk County Veterans. I just want to say we're excited about the progress on the new edition and sometime in the new f near future we'll be coming talking about naming. It's, it's something that we brought up in the past about um, recognizing somebody in the community um, and, and it at some point before the grand opening might be a good time to, to revisit that in the process to get that approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to uh, minutes. Minutes for the January 7th and January 9th meetings. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? All right. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. This mm -hmm. will be approved Second. as, is there any item in this anybody wishes to discuss? Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Little? Yes. Jalka? Yes. White? Yes. Leland? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Uh, next, we have a, a motion. The travel request submitted by Debbie Bunger, Human Resources Director, be approved and direct the chair to sign for the same for $1,138 for Marianne Kurtenbach and Amanda Fessenmeyer to attend the employment law meeting in Altoona, Iowa, scheduled for April 18th or April 8th through April 9th. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next, we have a motion to direct the county auditor to advertise for a public hearing to be held at 9.05 on Tuesday, January 28th, 2020, in boardroom 201 of the Blackhawk County Courthouse, 316 East 5th Street, Waterloo, Iowa, on the proposed vacation of McStay Road, originally established July 23rd, 1862, legally described as that part of 66 row of Mixed Day Road, lying south of the Southley Road, south of Young Road, north of Northley Row of US 20 lying along east. Okay. 
Um, motion and second. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Motion to authorize and direct the finance director to set the date of hearing to be held at 9.07 a.m. on January 28, 2020, in boardroom 201, the Blackhawk County Courthouse, Waterloo, Iowa, on the proposed fiscal year 20 budget amendment. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right, and the next is a resolution that the suspension requested by Cassandra Little on taxes owed for 2019 and 2020 installments in the amount of $1,268 for parcel number 89138-27-429-011 be approved pursuant to uh, 427.8 of, of the Code of Iowa and the County Treasurer be authorized and directed to adjust her records accordingly. Second. Rita Schmidt, Treasurer. Um, Sandra had reached out um, concerning her low income. She missed the period of time for to apply for that. So this is another action that we can provide for her to uh, uh, freeze the taxes. And um, I have uh, had her refer to uh, Mr. Fagley to see if she would qualify through DHS to have them also uh, just have her on the list for that. And at this time, um, we're still working with that. So. Uh, it was a request to uh, suspend the taxes. I have her on my list to make sure that she qualifies for that um, uh, credit that's allowed to her. And um, uh, I kind of oversee that to make sure that um, she, she does file that. Because it may be a point where most of the taxes will be taken care of because of her low, low income. So it's to freeze this year's taxes and then I'll work with her in the future for uh, getting that credit applied for in a proper time and uh, going forward from there. Great. Any further discussion or questions? Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Jelka? Yes. White? Yes. Lehman? Yes. Little? Epstein? Schwartz? Yes. Uh, motion that the appointment of Beth Knipp be to fill the existing term for the Black Hawk County Board of Health be approved effective January 14, Some 2020. Second. Any discussion? I just, I'd just like to comment, I guess, after the interviews that we had two excellent candidates, one for um, the Conservation Board, as well as um, Beth Knipp for the Health Board. And um, I think she's well known in the community and has done a lot of work in the community, but she's very familiar with the equity systems and the things going on currently with our health department and the restructuring. And she came with a strong background in health care mm -hmm. from uh, Blackhawk Grundy Mental Health, as well as Unity Point. So. That's a very strong, very impressive candidate. Anything else? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion, motion passes. <coughs> and next is the motion that the appointment of Terry Rogers to the Blackhawk County Conservation Board be approved effective January 14, 2020, with the term ending on December 31st, 2024. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes, just to add comments about Terry as well. She came with a very strong background in conservation organizations in the local, state, and international level. And um, she is an adjunct right now, currently at Hawkeye Community College and Natural Resources Programs. Um, but she's serving currently and in the past on, on several uh, groups and organizations and active. And she came with a very strong background, one of the stronger ones we've ever had. So. I believe that she I just semi-retired into that adjunct position yes, and had previously recently. been full-time at, at Hawkeye. So another really fine candidate. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Next is discussion on the results of the IT assessment. Um, Kim Veter, IT director. Um, I know that you guys know, but just a reminder, um, we're getting close to going live with the tax administration application. Um, this week, um, they're going through the user, test, user acceptance testing, so we've got that going. Um, and so um, I just wanted to um, mention that as I prepare this. So my time has been kind of limited, and so I'm just getting on to this so that we can have some information for me to go forward with what I'm doing with the budget. Um, and I have a little bit here if I can get this to open up. <coughs> mm. 
Okay, so I really don't have a whole lot to say here, but as far as this, but um, following up on the IT assessment, it's been my impression that the board is supportive of most of the suggestions made by the ICIT team. And the most important part of this is staffing. And I've been talking to Debbie Bunger about this, and maybe you have too. My goal today is to get general support for a plan to evaluate and update job descriptions for the department with the HR, with the help of the HR department. The assessment recommends staffing that includes three levels of technicians, and I've got a slide about that. Tier one is basic help desk assistance. Tier two is a system engineer. Tier three is what we would currently refer to as a network administrator. The ISIN recommend, recommendation is for one, three, tier three, one, tier two, and two tier one positions. There's always already sufficient funding in my budget for the network administrator position for the remainder of this fiscal year to do due to staff vacancy that existed since fall. I would like to add, get support for adding this position at this time. Secondly, I'd like your support for working with ACES to determine which of the services are current contract that we should continue to use. For example, the monitoring firewalls, security maintenance, encryption for emails, among other features are currently included there in contract. Plus, I expect that even with adding in-house staff, we will require additional support for large pro projects. Potentially, we could write an RFP including those services that need to be continued at least temporarily. Finally, I will be including in my budget presentation more detailed information about the hardware and software requirements, recommendations from the assessment. So the biggest next step is to know that I've got the support of the board to implement these recommendations. Um, the positions, reevaluating all the staff and making some serious changes. Um, I've said all along when the S-400 was gone, our needs would definitely change and that's gonna happen in February when we go live. Um, so one of the things, like I said, is to support some, the biggest thing in my mind, then developing the job descriptions, the succession plan, hiring staff, training for existing staff. There's a couple things that would be software that we'd need to buy. Um, this ticketing system, remote, remote support platform, those things that I'd have more information about when we actually did the budget. Um, and then obviously what we're gonna do with contracted services. So this is kind of their tier ex explanation of those positions so that each one builds on the previous one. So help desk does basic support, that kind of thing. The systems engineer also provides support, but has you know a little bit more knowledge, that kind of thing. And then finally the network the technician three is like what we'd say, what we'd call network administrator system system administrator. So um, really what, what I'd like to know from you guys today is are you willing to make the commitment to follow through with the things that the ICIT recommended. I think we've got to see the budget first, make our decision there rather than today because I, I'm not really sure what the cost is involved. Right, but I guess my point is, you know, Debbie's staff and myself are going to spend quite a bit of time putting together this. Okay, well, I'd just like to have some encouragement to know that it's a possibility. Your two existing sure. employees, <laughs> are you talking about them becoming a um, tier one, two, or three? Tier one for Deb for sure. And then we'll have to evaluate the other position. I mean, that job description is gonna be gone. That's the ASO 400, mm -hmm. so right. yeah, when that disappears. But oh. If that one becomes a tier one, then you won't hire for that position as a tier one. Right, right. Because you have one, and then the second person? If we look, evaluate this other person and they're capable, if not with training, we just need to work through that. Mm -hmm. So what I really, the two that I would like to hire for sure are those two upper level ones. And if I could get started on the technician three now, because like I said, I've got money in the budget already for a position, it wouldn't have been enough because the position that was being replaced is at a lower level. Mm -hmm. I know that I support moving in this direction. I, I support you and NHR spending the time necessary to develop 
and implement this and bring it back to us because I know you want to you want to bring it this to reflect in your budget that you want to present us so we've got you're looking for that indication right I'd agree with that um, like I said supportive also of looking as quickly as possible at getting you assistance when I know that's part of the issue is your plate is very full with Tyler and different things um, involving that so yeah I'm supportive of you moving forward on it and I think now is an opportune time to be looking at this we have the assessment uh, and it's it, I'm glad you included the uh, look at the contract because I feel there could be cost savings there that you could present to us to support adding these positions and you did mention to follow up on Dan's comment on that you did mention us looking at that but it'll yes. need your recommendation probably more than us saying what's the most helpful right, and beneficial right. so to I us. mean we'll, we'll have to visit with them and talk through that but yeah. or if we do it RFP and get somebody totally different I mean that's yeah. always a possibility but the services that you think we need to right you know. right because some of the things that are included in the contract like the firewall monitoring monitoring and the system security monitoring you know are things that we're going to want to have what are we paying now per month for contract twenty thousand dollars if I remember correctly twenty one thousand dollars per month much. yes mm -hmm. contract yes. is ridiculous and if you throw this on top you got a huge budget budget over there now so we need to kind of look at the whole package yeah I mean that's always like you said in my comments but it's looking at that budget and going back maybe a slide and that's what you're talking about proposing in your budget so we have outline items and yes costs mm -hmm. and right like that right. so well we've been kicking the can down the road long enough it's time to move on this mm -hmm. yeah and start saving so. some money and get you can pay for them that can do the job mm -hmm. you can pay for a lot of staff if you don't have that huge contract you're yep. wasting yep. money on yeah so did that give you the direction yes, you need yes. to? That's I mean I <clears throat> having knowing that you agree is important. Well I bet personally I'm gonna see the budget. I have no idea what your numbers look like. So I can't Because a couple of those things are, you know, that they recommended like Office three sixty five is a annual <clears throat> cost. <clears throat> so I mean I what I've done so far in the budget and I've, that I, James has already is I've listed the things that I would have had anyway. And then I've got a, at the bottom the list of recommended things from ICIT. So. Some of those I would imagine have a phase in type of a skip plan. Or, right. Or if we well. ended up doing this, I don't, I don't proceed, I don't see us doing it all immediately. It'll be a phased in thing. So. Yeah. Yes. So not one budget where we. Yes. We all it's like, out. oh, for sure, that we would probably stretch it into more than one year. Sure. Be great. Yeah. I'm excited to the fact that we could get you someone right away because we have that open position as well too to mm -hmm. start on that so the sooner the better I think absolutely okay anything else yeah. so in reality you got three open positions three open positions that you're gonna fill right tech two and two tech threes um that what it was? well for sure one of the tech ones and then like I said we need yeah. to evaluate the other position but yes the money that I have this year from the position that I had would be sufficient to pay for them for the rest of the year, but it would be an increase oh, sure, because for him that next year. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Yep. Thanks. All right, before we move on to the work session on the budget, do we have any reports or information from the board? I do, Chris. Yes, Dan. The uh, warming center, it's been open for a week now. Uh, I want to call it a, it's a significant success. What uh, encourages me the most is the Waterloo Police Department has brought like five or six people to the warming center in the evening. Uh, from a uh, uh, people who oversee a budget, that's encouraging because typically when people come to the police departments and they're homeless and they need a place to stay, that can tie up an officer for two or three hours. So it's nice that in 10, 15 minutes, an officer can transport that person to the warming center. They can be provided shelter for the day and other resources can be located for them. Uh, we have a little bump in the road now. The fire marshal contacted us and we're working out some issues with uh, the fire marshal. Uh, but my experience with the fire marshal is they're always willing to work with you. Uh, the second item is, and my last item is, I'm going to take a trip down to Hickory Hills today uh, to see their operations. And I think a lot of people forget we actually have a buffalo, or, or technically a bison herd. I don't want to call them a buffalo. 
uh, water buffalo, I guess, are in Vietnam, right, Craig? <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm, uh, I want to remind people of that, and that's pretty unique. That's pretty neat. Uh, so I'll go down there, take a look at the operations, and hopefully get to see a buffalo or two, and uh, we can market and sell that. Right. There's a great picnic spot right by the buffalo will come up and watch you eat. That's, mm. that's fun. <laughs> maybe that, you maybe can watch them and they watch you. It's, I it's about four Everybody wins. Okay. Yeah. I enjoy bison meat, by the way. <laughs> Tell it. That's enough. Tell it, Joe, when you're uh, stroking. <laughs> yeah. Conversation for another day. But I, I would just add, if the public's looking to get involved with the Warley Warming Center, they can reach out to us either on Facebook, looking at Warley Warming Center, or uh, by email at warleywarmingcenter at gmail.com. I had my first 2 a.m. shift there, well, I guess it would have been 2 a.m. Thursday morning, and definitely disoriented me the rest of the day. We're not sleeping for a day, but it was a really, um, it had been a while since I had worked, I had volunteered as a child in, in different centers, and so it had been a while since I had worked directly with that population, and it's, it's a good reminder and a humbling experience for everybody, and so I recommend that a lot. Is it still open then with regard to the fire code issue that's still going to continue to be able to? Yes. Yeah. We're, st we're staying open. <laughs> I was going to say that would be terrible. Okay. Well, it sounds like, Dan, we're working with the other agencies in town to, for these people too. Yeah, because that's always my concern mm -hmm. with nonprofits. I hate to see duplication of services. Yeah, and uh, working with uh, her over there. That, with, uh, uh, the hospitality house. Yeah, yeah. Distance. Yeah, Johnny's been really key at. One of the folks that really got this going. When folks check in to the center, um, they're given the option. They're not forced to because this is a, a low barrier center. So you want to be able to make sure that everybody can come in, whether they're, you know, dealing with addiction or whether they've got, whether they're even intoxicated at the time. Um, we're going to take you in because we don't want you out on the streets. Uh, people are given the option that if they want to be referred to services when they check out in the morning that we will make appointments for them with all the different agencies, whether it, whether they're a veteran or whether they're um, just a homeless family or whatever. Um, but we don't require it because, again, it's a low barrier shelter and some people don't want to be going through that process. They just don't want to die that night in the cold. Is there any and, security there? Or? Um, we have um, regular patrols with Waterloo PD and a pretty extensive uh, uh, video surveillance system. I call it a success. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other reports or information before we move on? All right, next we will go into a work session, discussion of possible board action, consideration of all aspects, all aspects of the fiscal year 21 Black Hawk County budget. All right. <clears throat> Happy budget season. Um, so today we are... Uh, we have quite a bit of uh, presentations here, but they hopefully all should be pretty quick, uh, pretty to the point, um, and we can kind of just hear this uh, pretty timely <laughs> here. But um, we'll kind of kick it off. I'll kick off with uh, the board office, uh, general supervision, uh, and then uh, medical examiner, JCS, district court. Uh, and then once I'm done with those, uh, we'll probably move on to um, Grant presenting the auditor uh, budget. Treasurer, Recorder, HR, and then we'll end with the VA. So, uh, right up here uh, we have the board office. A lot of what I'm going to be presenting, uh, there are very little to no changes, so uh, it should be, should be pretty easy here. But uh, right here, as you can see, the 17 actuals, 18 actuals, 19 actuals, 20 requested, and 21 requested. The dollar and the percent change on the on the far right hand side, uh, those are just from FY20 and FY21. So right there, you'll see uh, a twenty nine thousand, close to thirty thousand dollar increase on salaries and benefits. Um, I will break that down to what that really looks like. That is actually um, just primarily health insurance. So and I will kind of break that down here as we move forward. James, I had a question. I, I, yeah. I know you have on there listed the fiscal year 20 <laughs> requested. Was that actually our adopted budget, too? Not like yes. It, so that's the numbers we go from. Thank what, you. Back up there a little bit, James. Um, so the uh, salaries was just simply <laughs> the increase, benefits, and, and salary increase. Yep. And so I, I, I can break that down a little okay. bit more on. What's the operating 
actually curtailed. You know, I mean, what's seventy three? So it's yeah, it's I understand. The but right what's there. actually in the operating? I mean, what yep. expenses are in there? I'll bring it down here. All right. So this is this is a breakdown of what this actually looks like okay. here. So uh, salary and wages. This only increased two thousand three forty one. Now, when when I when I'm putting this in here, I'm also uh, we have some placeholders. So we have uh, a four percent for elected officials, and that is including uh, this board as well. So if that is something that you decide uh, when we kind of talk about salaries, um, these numbers can adjust. Uh, but see, you'll see right there the the twenty five thousand one ninety four. That is purely health insurance. So that that went up, and that is that's really just because we added a 750 family. Two family. Of them. Yep. One or two of them. Just one. One. So. And then the two um, percent increase in insurance. Is that correct? In that as well? Yep. 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 Um, oh, okay. Go ahead. So Ipers increased uh, 219, um, FICA 177, uh, and then below there you'll see uh, training. Training three thousand, uh, office supplies fifteen hundred, um, subscriptions publications five hundred, minor office equipment five hundred. Um, we didn't need that line item zero six zero three, so I took that out there. That's the small decrease that we had. Uh, professional services five hundred, um, advertising that's really just the um, publishing for sixty seven thousand. Um, we know how much we're spending on that fiscal year averaging. Yeah, it's 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 right around the 65, 62, 65. It really depends on how often we have to publish. And then IPERS, uh, did the county's portion go up at all this year? No. There's a difference, the difference in numbers from the first slide and the second slide there from that 527, 744, was it, it was something in, in fiscal year 20 on the previous slide? Uh, it shouldn't. No. Yeah, uh, where it's got the 525, 788 is. The difference, and then the difference becomes different, the hmm. change. I'm not sure why that's calculating like that. The, the differences are correct, though, so I don't. The difference is well. The difference uh, is twenty-seven thousand nine seventy-six on the one and twenty-nine nine thirty-two on the other. So, yeah, I would, I would, I would have to look at that. The this page, the the summary might just be calculating something, something a little different. I don't know why that would be, but uh, these would be the the correct. So the second sheet you think is the yeah. correct. So basically, the only change in the boardroom was uh, salary. Exactly. Why? I mean, uh, why did we arrive at four uh, percent? That was the compensation board. Decided. You just meant you put that in as a marker. Yep. Just because they said it, not yeah. Yep. Not that we do it. Sure. Okay. So then we need to correct the summary sheets. But okay, that's yeah. That's not. Yeah. Um, and I mean, when we when we talk about when we talk about salaries, um, that's. That's something that we can kind of discuss, but that was that was the place marker for the compensation board. So, okay. it really don't mean anything until the board no, does right. their thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, I just need a number to put in there. So, and for salaries, typically you probably put three in, which doesn't mean we can't change that as well. Correct. But I thought we just yep. usually have a place marker. So, yep. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. So, okay. Any other questions on the board office? Mm -hmm. All right, move on to the next one, James. Yep. So we got board supervision. This is where we pay. Um, we have hyper payouts. Uh, we have uh, the board training and education here. Um, we have uh, subscriptions to the GFOA. Uh, any legal fees come out of this this account. Uh, different uh, like the audit. Uh, those finances come out of here. Uh, and then any insurance that uh, might get reimbursed. So the only difference that we have is that 1100 Those were the utilities that we budgeted for Grin and Grow. 
So uh, because we don't because we don't have that uh, daycare anymore uh, at Pinecrest, we don't have to budget for it. So that is the that's the one uh, increase in revenue there. So those fifty five thousand that are requested in 20 and 21 but weren't in 18 and 19? Nope, so you'll you'll see in salaries and benefits, they they were, um, but I, I don't put salaries and benefits for uh, 18 and 19, and, and you'll see that kind of moving forward um, as far as the budget goes. That's how I believe Susan had done it, and that's how she had advised me to do it, just because they're comparing the um, those two last uh, years, so. Well, it's nice for history sometimes, though, to see where we've trended. I don't know, but yeah, we can add those later if we, anybody wanted to. Yeah. All right. Do we have any other questions on board general supervision? Nope. All right. And, and we can. And again, you you have this handout, but it it really breaks it down um, line item by line item down below as well. So. I believe we have the medical examiner next. Uh, the medical examiner, uh, JCS and district court, um, I lumped these together just because there's no change on any of them. Um, these are going to be 0% uh, um, increase or decrease across the board. So we're keeping everything the exact same uh, from FY20. So we expect all three to have the same revenue as they did this year? Yep. All three. You know where medical examiner's at as far as we're halfway through the fiscal year? I do. Uh, Are they roughly at their 50% of allocation? Yep. Everyone was very close, um, and a lot of these are, are grants that come at the end of the fiscal year as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, if you if we looked at uh, FY20, a lot of these, a lot of these come in June, um, but they are they're right on pace from where FY20 was. We just applied for a grant, didn't we, with the medical examiner? We did. Yes. Um, it was. That'll a, be for FY20, right? FY21. Yeah. And and you said you put those together. Why? Just because they didn't increase. Yeah, uh, they they mean to uh, they stayed on track with expenses and revenues. So I think I know the answer to this. But did you talk to the medical examiner? Yep, yep. And he was he was very comfortable with um, the same amount. budget. Yep. The hit and miss. You never know that. I, know. I mean, you no. can go sky right tomorrow. Yeah. So. All right. Do we have any other questions on these three? I believe auditor's office is next. Flip this one over closely. <laughs> Do you want to uh, pretty much everything stayed the same except for salary and benefits. Uh, there's a slight increase in uh, training and education just to reflect uh, historical uh, uh, experience and that's that's mostly my training and education going to meetings uh, the state and national level um, a large portion of that is paid for by uh, ISAC and so um, it could be higher but uh, fortunately because of my uh, being on the board of the National Association of Counties I get a uh, my travel um, paid for and a stipend for other expenses. So uh, I think that's a pretty modest amount. Not much change otherwise in, in my budget. James, you said you put 4% in for elected officials. What do you got in for non-bargaining? Uh, non-bargaining, I would, I have 3% three across, er, three across the board. 3%. So grant years is basically salaries again. Right. Benefits and <clears throat> yep. And, and again, it breaks it down. Mm -hmm. 
And James, too, and this, I don't know what, this, maybe it's a formula or something that's off, but I was going to say the numbers on all three totals for this I one. Was, I was using an old Excel sheet that was handed down to me, so I, I wonder if there's just something that was just not computing right. So I, I'll go back and I'll, I'll look at those and I'll, I'll make sure that those okay. are correct. Because that has all, all three different, not just one. Yeah. So I just thought all three might be incorrect. Okay. Thank you. I'll go in and I'll go in and look at it. Thank you. All right, do we have any other questions on the auditor's budget at this moment? No. All right, we on to the treasurer's office. Didn't have any changes in the expenses at all. Uh, we stayed flat with that. And as far as the budget the revenue, uh, we're around 120,000 in revenue. A uh, little conservative on the interest on investments because that's kind of bouncing around right at the time that we were doing the budget. So, um, and we had um, uh, auto registration fees that increased 18,000, and uh, we're still putting uh, parking ticket stops on, which the city is paying for that uh, to put stops on their car registration. So those are the major points of revenue that we had increased. Still quite a bit compared to where we were at 10 years ago. Oh, definitely, definitely. Where are you at right now? Do you have any idea for FY20, six months in? Are we that I did, not, I did not check that. Or is it all coming in towards the end? Yeah, our, our um, CDs have been coming around 3%. It was uh, the last one I would think was three or 2.85, so it kind of lowered. We were. We hit that three three percent margin, and then it started drifting down again. So that's where um, I was hoping for another three, but we were, we're, lot, we're still better than what we, we were. were a lot lower. A lot right. lower. I think we were like point three five yep. ten years ago. So <laughs> huge huge difference. So it, we're we're seeing a, a, an upbeat, but uh, better than what it had been for sure. Yeah. So again, it's just basically salaries, James. Yeah, for the, yeah, for the uh, expenses, absolutely. Yeah. Did forget to mention something else. Uh, I may have some retirements in the future. I did have one retired December 31st, and so just as a kind of a heads up, within the next year or two, uh, there could be another three or so that may uh, be retiring uh, upon their choice. What about the office out at Crossroads? Is that going to stay active or? That's closed. Oh, uh, we closed it due to, yes, at this point, uh, the that. technology was uh, real iffy. There was going to be major costs to put in internet uh, out there. Uh, and then we did not know if the functions between um, uh, the arts, the title and registration system, would work with the Tyler system. So it would be, it, it was very unknown. And so to have it, work halfway we closed it uh in the future possibly the dot would like us back out there and so would the public but uh it's uh, to uh, give the best function having everything downtown is working for right now uh, but that's something that uh, can be addressed in the future once we're up and going with tyler and and the technology with it and having uh upbeats there too that that will uh, uh give us an idea to look at it again if not uh because the DOT, their, their contract out there with uh, Crossroads was coming to uh, close, so we don't know if they're going to renew or not. And so that was kind of a questionable thing, too, to invest in something that didn't know if they would be moving to someplace else, and then there would be another cost. So I'd well, just be shipping it to your office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just expect lines, right? <laughs> Rena, Rena, if you don't mm -hmm. mind, to add just a question. You had a, a full-time staff that you put in last year's budget. How's that working, or is that working real well? Working real well. Uh, the um, uh, staff person that we received had been in the office before, so the uh, training time was a lot lesser because of her knowledge that she had previously when she had gone to a different office. So, um, and the ERTs. Uh, they are uh, the electronic titling is uh, mushrooming uh, larger and and uh, they're going to be putting the um, used cars on here uh, sometime this year so uh, I foresee that to be um, more intense than what we have expected so far so so far everything's going well good thank you okay, thank you any other questions on the treasurer's office at this moment all right we'll move on to the recorder's office 
Morning, Sandy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, similar to Rita, there's no major changes in the recorder's budget. I was able to project a slight increase in revenues. To date, we are ahead 1,500 documents for recording, so we're hoping that trend continues. Also, our vital records division is seeing a large increase due to the Real ID Act that goes into effect in October of 2020. We're processing a lot more marriage and birth requests. To get your star on the driver's license, you have to show your marriage license if your name is changed. So we're seeing a lot of business because of that. So we hope that continues. We think that will continue right up to the end of the deadline, possibly this entire year. I don't have any um, major changes in my overall expenses. I think they reduced a little bit. And as you know, I don't have any capital requests. I use the records management account to continue to upgrade the office in phases. So we are completing a project right now that will allow our deeds for Blackout County to be on my website back to 1970. So I will continue to use that fund to pay for anything that I need this year. Sounds good. Any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you. You talked about satellite offices at one time or doing that, I think, during special times of the year. Yes. Are you um, still doing that? You know, we'd like to have, um, I, I would like to get with Grant sometime, and when your office is open for election, I would consider being open longer for passport processing. Um, that would be something to consider since security is here in place. We could stay open a little bit later and help customers with that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on the recorder's office before we move on? All right, we will move on to human resources next. Good morning, board. Debbie Bunger, HR Director. Good morning. Um, so the last two years I had cut our budget quite a bit. Um, this year I just left it level. Um, the, prim the bulk of our budget has always been training and education, um, not just for internal staff, for my staff, but for the entire county because we do pay for that for the most part. Um, so I really don't have anything other than uh, just keeping the status quo for my operating budget. And then I think James would have the salary information. I don't have that. Previous years, you've had some revenue, but that's been probably when you've Pretty minimal, other, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I assume you're not thinking of doing yeah. that this I year. I really can't project any significant revenue for human resources. I don't think, I think it was like $100 anyway. It wasn't significant. <laughs> 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 What's um, minor office equipment furniture? Um, you know, I actually don't have anything specific other than we do have those monitors, the dual monitors. I would, you know, I don't know if that maybe should just go under Kim's budget. I could move that. At one point, I was going to get, um, you know, like if we needed new calculators and that. So it, I it's thought that'd come through so. IT. Yeah, and if we, and if that's the case, I can move that. To, we can move that to IT. We, we do have dual monitors. I have one that. Um, I'm using actually a different one now that's not really very good, and I would like a new uh, dual monitor system for uh, at least one of the bigger ones. Professional services? Um, those are for um, the training that I bring in for staff. Um, like for last year, I did it was over $3,000 just for one person to come in and do that two day training at Hartman for um, professional development for staff. So usually it's at least $1,500. So I try to get as much as I can for that. That much that that'll probably pay for three speakers. If, you know. yeah. okay. All right. Do we have any other questions on HR at this time? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Debbie. Debbie, I, I guess I do have a question. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of catching people at the end. Um, as far as training, we've talked about having some training in the courthouse for some of the staff and, and doing that type of thing, like Excel training and and some of that being needed, mm -hmm. where not just one person or two people. Have done something like um, like a class, whether somebody could come in or whether people could mm -hmm. attend a class. Is that something that would be in your budget, or if we were to do something like that, or That's is that probably that would be more in a, um, a cost sharing between departments? Uh, actually, Nafisa has been working with uh, Hawkeye to come up with some um, numbers. Her and I have been working on that with Kim right now, um, and I think we, you know, at one at some point we'll send out a little email about because it was kind of unclear the way that it was structured. Um, I know our current IT has possibly can do some some training, but I don't know if it's, it's quite what uh, we were wanting it to be. So we're, we're kind of exploring that right now. But I so think if it was a more. class, though, that many people in the county could take, so it wouldn't be just one department type of thing, right? would that be something that could be offered through your budget? Not that, not that it's built in there now, I'm just asking. 
I mean, I suppose if you wanted it to, yeah, we could run it through my budget. It's not in there right now. I mean, nobody that. probably wants it in their budget if it's going to add to it. <laughs> I get that. But yes, yeah. as far as some but of But typically things. when it comes to your particular staff and what they need, those go into staff or into departmental budgets, mm -hmm. you know, for what, for their specific needs. So, so do you think there are any people in your department that could benefit by IT classes or courses or any other type of training that you don't have them? My staff is pretty good if they wanted like the like the higher level maybe um, you know I think um, most people that we hire like at least now going forward you know it's in the job description that we do expect them to be proficient if it's in their job description so we do expect them to come in with some basic now we do have some longer term employees who might benefit from even the intermediate um, but without actually surveying people, I don't know where we're at with that. Yeah, right no, mm -hmm. I think that'd be something we could do fairly quickly if we needed sure. to, because I think you'd find out the level, but I just thought, and it would be fairly insignificant in cost, sure. but I just thought maybe training is something that we needed mm -hmm. to kind of keep in mind too, and I know the departments all look at that, but sure. sometimes there's an overall savings if we could do it as a group mm -hmm. or something too. Okay, just that was my question on training, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do have a question for James on salaries. Was Amanda's, I know Amanda's salary had, um, some of it was charged to the civil service. Civil service is that yep. still the same? Where it's that is, yeah, yep, it remains the same. And we'll I mean, when when we kind of talk a little bit more about civil service, you'll see that in there. But uh, those salary those wages are um, reduced by the amount that gets charged to civil service. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other questions on HR before we move on? All right. Moving on to Veterans Affairs Office. Uh, good morning, board. And Yolanda Loveless, uh, Veterans Affairs. Um, excited because uh, this is my first time. Um, but uh, we looked at it. Our budget. Um, we've got operating expenses, and we got uh, expenses for veterans. Uh, we cleared this, and we had a discussion with uh, our commission in December on our, our budget to make sure that we had appropriate set of eyes on it, and we scrutinized it uh, down, but. In particular, we, we added a couple of things in, in case of, because I want to again, again say thank you, because we're getting that 3,500 square foot of space. And so we're going into 2021, we're going to have some additional operating expenses to offset some of the additional space that we have. And so uh, in particular, I wanted to cover a couple of things there. We got some office supplies and purchases that we increased uh, about $500 on in participation of us doing a few more things as we get more foot traffic in that new space. Um, a, another one is where we have um, maintenance contract agreements. Typically that's where we have, uh, we have to pay for cost of, uh, of software that we utilize with the VA. There might be one or two more workstations that we will bring that into play. And there might be some requirements where if we bring in someone, um, let's say hypothetically, uh, a psychiatrist or someone like that, that may need some kind of software uh, to support their um, evolution if, if we're doing something of that nature. We're just putting that out there because there might be a requirement uh, for additional um, software costs or maintenance costs. Additional, we, we're looking at advertisement and publishing is another one that we're looking at. Typically, we've been taking a lot of our advertising and punishment out of our and publish, publishments out of our um, state allocated funds. Um, and then what we're noticing is that as we get ready to, to do some more wholesaling of, of our advertising, bragging on the things that we want to do for the county. Uh, right now we use a courier and there's about $240 a shot. And we use it in three phases. Around Veterans Day, we want to do something out there in the newspaper, um, a Memorial Day, and uh, the last one is Christmas. So that's typically when we do our advertisements to just say thank you for what you're doing or what we're doing. But we want to probably, look at doing a little bit more advertising for whatever program that we bring into the new space. Uh, there's some, some proposals out there and I want to support that if possible. And then we had utilities. We increased that just a couple uh, because of the space is going to be a lot larger. Um, we're going to probably need a Wi-Fi system to support that um, and things of that nature. And that's our operating expenses. And the great, then um, go ahead, the sure. great markers. At one time, we had like, wasn't there a huge plaza of 10,000 of them or something in there? I mean, are you still buying them or? We, we are, and we're scrutinizing that, um, uh, Mr. Little. Um, we have a current inventory of what we have. 
Yeah. Um, our biggest thing is um, the service organizations are also supposed to help support that yeah. in that. And we're seeing that that's not always happening. Um, but for the most part, we are scrutinizing, making sure that we have the appropriate number, in particular when we get ready close to Memorial Day. That's when we see the biggest, okay. um, um, where we, we dispute them out. But we, we haven't seen any lately where someone's turned in a bunch of them. Um, I know that we did pick up a couple of them from the Memorial. Um, there were World War II ones. And they were a little bit different contract construction, uh, but we do have them. But no, we don't have any excessive amount of okay. grade markers. But they are expensive because you know they're bronze. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. um, they tend to disappear. And uh, yes, yeah. and that's the unfortunate thing is that that's what's happening is we're now telling people to get you know use a m monument company to get them uh, actually installed and cement it because they're walking away in our cemeteries. Unfortunately, I don't know what people are doing with them, but they're walking away, mm. and so that is a big expense. Um, but what we did was we did scrutinize uh, cost of service to veterans. Um, we did uh, cut about $500 down on transportation. That's really our gas cards and our bus uh, fare. We got our van out there now giving our veterans rides to uh, their medical appointments and their doctor's appointments. And we are scrutinizing veterans who are coming in saying, hey, I need a bus ticket. Why? You know, we want to support them if they're going to a job interview, um, something of that nature. But if it's just that they need a bus ticket to get around town, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you need some other kind of resources. We really do want to be a hand up and not a hand out kind of environment. Uh, Pruno expenses, we have uh, scrutinized that the last couple of years. Um, again, it's one of those where this was where you guys gave us money to support an indigent kind of veteran who didn't have life insurance and family couldn't afford it. So it's about $2,500 a pop for, um, for them to be cremated. And so we average about, uh, so in this quarter here, the last six months, I think we did six. Um, so uh, we're well below uh, where we need, uh, but we do. We don't know what's going to happen. But again, it's really education and getting people aware that they should have some kind of insurance policy and uh, health policy. And then we also cut down and scrutinized a little bit on shelter, which is what we pay for rent. Again, each veteran that comes in, uh, we average about $3,500 a month in utilities and rent for our veterans that are coming in. But they are getting scrutinized that, uh, you know, that, we don't tell them that you have three chances. We try to get them off of it as soon as possible. Uh, in the back door, we know that a veteran can come in three times for services, but we're not making that available right away. We're telling our veterans, here, we're here to help you, but what are you gonna do to help yourself the next time? So we, we, we're seeing that we are seeing a decrease in helping with shelter, also with gas and utilities. Uh, with dental, uh, we cut that way down because out of the state allocation um, and also with the Iowa Trust Fund, a veteran can get uh, services up to $2,500 for dental. So unless it's an urgent thing, we left an urgent one in case someone comes in and they had an abscess or something that they can get that done. But for the most part, we're going to encourage them to use the Iowa Trust Fund. And then for medication, uh, we also re reduced that. So we looked at it and scrutinized the uh, general services for veterans and tried to do the best part that we could to make sure that we are being diligent with uh, county funds. Then the last thing is uh, we have a, a, a sedan that's uh, in dire needs. It's on its last leg. Um, we had it assessed. Um, it's about $3,500 worth of um, repairs that it needs. And then if you look at the total value of that sedan, it's, it's less than that. Um, we did get that sedan, I, I think, from DHS or uh, county social it's services. Health department. <laughs> health department was one. and. Uh, and so right now, a lot of our staff are using our personal vehicles. So like, like I, that's what I've been doing since I've been in the job. Is anytime I come down to a board of supervisors meeting or anything like that, I use my personal vehicle because that sedan just is, um, does not function and it's not safe. We talked about um, possibly utilizing your existing FY20 budget if there's money in there. Um, have you looked into that yet? We we're looking into that to see if uh, we can uh, establish that. I've been working with James to see if we can do that. And, yeah, I mean, you're not going to really know until you get near around the May or... That's what we're saying. Yeah, that's... The advice that I had given was let's wait until uh, the end of third quarter. That way we can yeah. have a better handle on the... On the well, if that's possible, I think that would probably be a win-win right there. It would. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you wait till the 1st of uh, July. If right. Right. 
Um, but in those conversations, we're hopeful that we can get it done this year. Um, and that way we don't even have, have to have it on this budget session. Yeah. So. And then the last thing is what we kitty with is our donations are coming in pretty well um, to help support a lot of our um, outreach programs. Uh, there is the other one that uh, I just got aware of is the state license plate that the veterans are getting. There's some fun there. Uh, so we're going to utilize that. I called and talked to uh, the commission down in Des Moines. They're trying to put something together so that we can formally request additional funds to even help with our community center if we need additional things. Uh, state allocation fund at $10,000 that we normally get every year. Right now, there's still an ongoing requirement that they will issue that out to all 99 counties. The, the problem that we're having with the 99 counties is some of the counties are not utilizing the $10,000 within that time frame. And so you got, uh, you know, state legislators saying, why am I giving you $10,000 and you're not utilizing it? Um, so that's the on ongoing battle there. But right now we should have that state allocation going into July. So that's $10,000 coming in. Where are we using that at? We use that for advertisement. We use that for a lot of our uh, Operation Christmas. We use it for our um, our... September where we do the um, homeless veterans stand down and all of our picnics and things of that nature if we don't get sponsored. Is that reflected in the budget? It is. So we have a separate line item for our donations um, that, that, that uh, state allocation funds come out of. And that 10000 or that grant that we get, is that reflected in the budget as revenue? It, it is. It's on, it's, uh, we keep it in our revenue budget worksheet. And it shows, and uh, so it's like, uh, I think it's 3,200 operational, and it says veteran grants. And uh, so it's, it's listed as revenue. We should probably add that on our revenue. Yeah, no. yeah that's what I wondered. Yeah. I'm not seeing We've it. We've been getting here. that for quite a while. I know yeah. for a while there, they weren't just showing it as revenue, or actually it wasn't anywhere. Right. Um, as far as I knew, uh, we did not uh, put that on our revenue worksheet um, because we can't count on it every single year. But that's that was the last I heard from. But you, from you know, it's not really diff any different than any other department has grants. You know, the health department will tell you, you know, they're not sure they're going to get them every year. Yeah. Okay. But those, I just think it should not, show up somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those those just okay. haven't been budgeted on the revenue side in years past. But if that's something that you would like me to do, I can definitely. Well, that brings us to a good point as far as the revenue that, that your department does take in. Mm -hmm. Where does that show up or how do we track that? Because I know you do a good job of tracking. I know there's been some questions come up in the past and there's some, and you had all the documentation needed and that type of thing. But as a county responsible for their budget as well, um, it would seem that that should show up in our information. Well, again, in I, mean, don't, I mean, donations you can't count on. Um, you can. You put it on there. Um, I mean, we we do our due diligence to make sure that every cent is accounted for, and, and we make sure that we look into those revenues. Um, as far as fiscally responsible, do you do you earmark a dollar amount for revenue? We haven't in the past for donations. Well, and I'm not saying if not on revenue, where do we? I guess if that's if we want to look at it that way, that yeah, you don't know from year to year what I know there've been some great contributions that people have given and, and that's you said you do keep track of it yourself though right we do we so yeah. everything that we get in we we turn it in to the to the auditor's office yep. and uh, and uh, and then they give us a receipt for it um so the auditor's office then has a report on that is that correct grant it's 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 reflective on our on our spreadsheets but we've just never we've just never counted it in our budget for revenue well, and I can see from an operating standpoint, you don't want to count on that. You just, you need your operating yeah. expenses. But I just thought there, the, as far as the reporting or as acknowledging, I guess, even what that, those totals are and that we're responsible for that. I don't, Grant, do you have a? Uh, I don't know um, exactly what we have, but I, I think that uh, if there's a record of what we've received in the past, then it would, I would think, make sense to use that. Uh, historical information to make an estimate. Um, like Tom said, a lot of departments don't know, they don't have guaranteed revenue. No, nobody's uh -uh. revenue is totally guaranteed. You just make a projection, you know, best estimate based on past experience. And I'd like to see it uh, during these discussions, not to scrutinize it, but uh, just so we're aware and the aware. public's aware of what's coming in and what's going out, how it's being spent, because it seems like a lot of these donations are earmarked. 
and uh, people may have questions, but it may even benefit the organization if uh, there's a need we in market here mm -hmm. to generate more contributions. Sure, yeah. and I can I can definitely put that on the on the budget. And this discussion is no reflection on yourself. Oh, you guys, no, no, no. You guys are doing an excellent no. job on documenting everything. We're, we're looking to, if anything, know. hopefully to help you right. as well for documentation. We're going to be actively out there uh, soliciting. You know, we have some competition. We've got the, um, <laughs> the flight that's going to be happening, and they, they got their big thing. Uh, there's some other ones out there, out there that's very competitive. But I don't want to burn our county out either, um, so we want to be – be careful about soliciting donations. Mm -hmm. Christmas is over and things of that nature. The honor flight is very important, so we don't want to uh, get into to theirs. But there is donations out there that will help us. I think there's a, a good opportunity when you open up your new center right. to showcase that. And I think you'll see people that, that'll want to mm -hmm. contribute or something. Mm -hmm. and this, and I'm not even sure you have a history on this. I don't know if maybe others remember it. About it was before you started. I think there was a family that it had a memorial that they wanted to donate if we were to ever open the center, and I think it was for like about thirty-five thousand dollars. Still trying to find that, Linda. That, okay. That that, con that commitment from that yes. family that yes. wanted to do that, mm -hmm. and like what Tom was just saying, once we once we contact KWWL and say, hey, we're at midpoint, we're ready to open the center up. Uh, so that the public is aware that we're listen, looking for donations to help uh, outfit it, maybe that 35 will come in. Um, since uh, my predecessor left, there has been kind of crickets on that 35. Okay. Their 35 case. Well, I just said they were pretty committed, up. and so I thought they even yeah. reached out, I think, we afterwards. Have, we to have say people they do that for Honor Flight, too, saying that, that look for a big check in the mail from us. And we got one a while back that was a big check. It was $20, and this gentleman, well off. Yeah. We're I'll certainly look. Disappointed. I'm, I'll certainly look in my Good emails service. too because I remember the family member even calling our office. So if there's anything I can find on it, I'll be sure to let you know. Sure. <laughs> Thank and you. I do have my honored guest here, the commissioner, and you know, all my other bosses. So. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi Warrington, Blackhawk County VA Commissioner. So one of the issues that concerns me when we talk budget though is people have been donating specifically because we had said if um, the Board of Supervisors came up with the money to do the infrastructure that it was on us and donations to come up with the furnishings, the equipment, the rest of the story. Um, and so I would caution that if this is a good year for donations, it's because of the center. And I just worry that I don't even know if those donations will be enough to really outfit it, it will be a beginning and it obviously is going to take some time and it will be a process. But with the honor flight and the, and the warming center and everything else going on in the county, you can't double tap everybody to the point of exhaustion. That ve ha being said, that vehicle being available in good working order that our staff are safe to transport veterans in and stuff is, is absolutely critical. And I. I hate to say that waiting till May because the worst time of the year for a safe vehicle obviously is winter in Iowa. Mm -hmm. And just like the police can now take people in 15 minutes instead of two hours to the warming center, us being able to transport a veteran in need that needs to get out to the clinic is critical to us in that vehicle. Um, we have one working vehicle and it's spread pretty thin when you look at our staff. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything we think that can be done to expedite that? Is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what you're looking you're at. Over budget, right. Then you're looking at another problem. Right. So, exactly. Uh, you it's, know, we're trying to expedite, expedite it by seeing if it's in this current budget mm -hmm. without budgeting it for the next fiscal mm -hmm. year. So, yeah. you know, we're doing what we can on that. Okay. It would just be controlling spending after it's purchased, I suppose, is reallocating those that dollar amount to the vehicle would just be. It would be fine. It would just reallocating the, the expenses. So. And hard to find money for a vehicle that sometimes been, in a lean budget. <laughs> that car has been sitting for a while anyway, hasn't it? We, we use it every now and then. Yeah, I was going to say, it's been sitting <laughs> anyway, it'll utilize the van. All right, do we have any other questions on the VA budget today? So that's what I have for. Um, uh, budget presentations, I would 
Uh, if it's okay with the board, I would like to meet again uh, this Thursday. Um, uh, conservation uh, attorney, civil service uh, would be the schedule that we're kind of just those three. So, yep, uh, we're still trying to piece in elections every once in a while or here and there. So depending on what that looks like, um, but that's kind of looking back or uh, looking like we might push that back. But um, yeah. So January 16th. I think we should decide too on the uh, compensation board because that money's implemented in all the budgets and then that reflects on what we're going to do the non burning So I think that's something that yeah, we can certainly get that out of the way and be done with it and sure. take a vote on it. And yes. Move on. Yeah. Sure. Because yes. again, it's a recommendation, so this board has to approve something. And agencies, have you thought about when you want to have those or in your? We talked about having presentations, if that was what we do. Uh, yeah, tentatively um, next week, uh, the 21st, is oh, kind of when I have it earmarked, uh, depending on. Because you'll have to contact them. Some of them may not be able to do it the day we'd like to. Right, do. yep. So that's that's why I haven't kind of set that in stone yet. But. Okay. All right, so this Thursday, 9 a.m.? 9. Please. Everyone? 9. Okay. Would you, so would you like to get the compensation, that discussion out on Thursday as well? Well, it's on the agenda. I mean, you got to you okay. keep generalizing the agenda with the work and possible action. Yep. Mm -hmm. We can do it anytime. Mm -hmm. You throw it right on there and hold a vote. Mm -hmm. okay. So just keep the agenda item the way it is. Yep. Okay. I'll, I'll put that on the Thursdays as well. So. James, when you're going to update those summary sheets yeah. and correct those, would you yeah. add on there the staffing summary? I think we've had in previous years, so you just had the FTEs and what those positions were, some yep. of those departments. Thank you. Yeah, that's no problem. You know, there, that's a prime example there, talking about this car. We're talking about giving the outside agencies money. We got needs here. Uh, that, uh, that's another prime example right there. And you walk in this office, as you walk into the boardroom right around the corner, you see a wall that needs fixed. We got things that need fixed here. We don't need to be giving money to outside agencies. They've got in place, I'm gonna get on the soapbox again, they've got boards in place, that's their job to raise money, it's not to come to us for monies. They, they found it easy when it was, uh, when we had the monies from the solid waste, but we don't have those monies anymore. We've gotta take care of ourselves first. I'm wondering if we have a car in the motor pool right now that the uh, county could survive without if they uh, kick it over to the veterans. We got pretty lean with those. Well, we really don't have a, we don't really have a motor pool. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I can get him a car with lights on the top and a sheriff on the side, but he might have a heartache. Yeah. So um, get around faster. <laughs> Kathy might have a plow, but um, um, we're trying to expedite it. I mean, it's been sitting there for a while. You do have the van. Um, personally, I think looking at your budget the other day, I think there's going to be money in the current budget. But we got to make sure so we don't go over. But we'll get there. Um, I don't know if the assessor's office has got. Would we give them two? We did give them two. They're looking yeah. at new cars too. Yeah, but I'm just no. wondering if they're utilizing them. If they're not, maybe they're we can get one from them. They're usually sitting out there. So why don't you check with <laughs> TJ and and see if he's utilizing both those cars? And if he isn't, maybe you can get one. It's an older car, but they're in good yeah. shape and running, at least till we get to the point where we're going to either buy one through the new budget or this current one. Yeah. I don't know if he's using them or not well, anymore. They might be in the same shape as your vehicle, too. They're, no, I they think they're in pretty good shape. So, yeah. See, you can only ask. All right. Do we have any other discussion on the budget today? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, James. How are you doing for a vehicle? Maybe you used to talk about Keep your job for another day. <laughs> you got a vehicle? <laughs> well, the wheels are spinning like we do. Isn't that right, Greg?